My name is Tarek. Welcome to Soren's YouTube channel. Right, I'm here for another episode of Reflections, and my guest for this one is going to be Shox, who is obviously a very well-known French Counter-Strike player from Source to CSGO, now CS2. So Shox, the place I actually wanted to start this interview was, I saw... Um, just while I was waiting to set this interview up, I was watching that documentary Vakam did about your career, like the legend of the game or whatever it's called with Shox. And if people don't know, it has like not just Shox himself, but people from his career, like KRL Smith, his, his actual father, believe it or not. And they give all like the background to his story. And it actually started, it, there was some questions I was going to ask you here that it gave me like the initial sort of like answer to, but I have some that I'd like to expand upon. So one thing I was actually kind of, shocked myself by in this video was I knew that you'd been a pro at quite a young age. You were like one of those teenagers that went to the lands and proved yourself. But I couldn't believe it. Said you said you started playing Counter Strike when you were nine. Do you actually yeah. think were you actually a prodigy at Counter Strike? Did you just take to the game very easily? Were you good from the beginning? Uh can that I mean from uh from so far, I remember, like, I think I was good, but, <laughs> you know, at this time it was just being some free for all uh, on the uh, CST, Siege, CS Assault, CS Office, stuff like that. I was just probably camping behind a box or stuff like that. And I was <laughs> right. thinking that I'm really good because I'm, I'm getting some kills. Uh, but definitely the love for the, for the game just came naturally. Uh, I would say I started playing at nine, but I couldn't like play that much, of course. Uh, because it was a violent video games and at the beginning my parents didn't want me to actually play the game uh, i was watching my uh, big brother uh, playing it a lot and with just like keeping saying like i want to play i want to play and still playing while i was not supposed to uh, my parents just like decided to okay wh what can we do you know like it's it's really hard to control a child when he he wants to do uh, something really hard and I would say that my love for the competition started actually uh, about 12, uh, 12, 13, because before that it was just about Counter-Strike itself and the game. Um, and about around like 12 or 13 years old, uh, I started to actually see the movies, uh, the land feature from the land back in the day in 1.6 uh, and stuff like that. And I was like, damn, like there are actually some people who are all coming up together with their PCs, uh, the monitors and they actually are playing the game together and just sharing that passion. And I, when I was looking at this footage, I was like, okay, I want to do this for sure. Like it was the start for me. One thing about this that I wanted to ask about was it seems like you might be someone who shares a phenomenon I've seen with a lot of players who became pro in esports, which is exactly the story you're describing. It's often that they're the younger brother and it's like their older brother's the one that has the game. And then it cause if everyone knows what it's like to be the younger brother, it's like you're always like, Can I have a go? And then they're like, hey, I'm playing like, maybe later. And so in, in some ways it makes you like super eager, like, oh, when I get my chance, so I'm gonna get really in there. And so I feel like the difference is there's people who played the game, Counter Strike any game, just for fun and they were good an adult i feel like if you're someone like this background though it almost makes you like super hungry to have a career and to go all in right uh i don't know if it's really coming from there but definitely uh you can have also like a little challenge uh with your big brother because you actually want to be better than him right uh and the stories will tell that uh, i'm not the i don't think i'm the only one who got that story that i'm actually starting the game uh thanks to my uh to my big bro and with the years, like the big bro, just, uh, I mean, stepping down and just uh, following the, the young brother, you know, and there is one day then he has to admit that, all right, you are better than me. But okay. it actually takes some time before the big bro, like, will tell you that. One thing I, th I have actually saw as well, because I wasn't from Source, if people don't know. Like, I used to, as, in, as someone in media, I followed the stories. Like, I knew Very Games was winning all the tournaments from the headlines and stuff. But I only saw, like, the big matches or some of the the Frag movies famously back in the day. So one thing when I was looking this up that kind of surprised me, Shocks, is I assumed, like, right, since I'd heard the story, Very Games won all those lands. I thought, right, it, it must just be the story that it's like Premier League, you know, when you get into the top team, then you win the championship. I noticed you won a lot of lands even early on, even when you would sort of, like, just okay lineups or one or two good players are you just a natural land player uh i don't know if i maybe maybe not i, I won't say like uh, i was maybe a natural land player or whatever but uh when i was coming to a land for a competition my first uh goal at the beginning was not always to win it of course like i always wanted like uh, to lift uh, a trophy or to be the first but at the really really young 
uh, stage, as I was saying, like my first uh, LAN, I think I was 14 or 15 years old, something like that. I was just here to actually share passion and like to maybe like be better than the others, but first to share the passion together. Uh, you know, we don't have the money to sleep uh, at the hotel or whatever. You had to bring your own computer. So I was bringing the computer of the family. My father, uh, I, I had to negotiate with him. Like, can I take the computer and the monitor for the weekend? Because uh, when I was doing that, then all the family could not use the computer. So it was a lot of negotiation. I had to be good at school to have good notes. Otherwise, it was not possible. Then uh, coming to the land, we were sleeping maybe two hours because we just wanted to play the game together and have fun while being close, you know? Like, I feel like playing a game and even right now, when you look at how the world is, uh, it's all about internet and just everyone being at home and just like connecting yes. to each other. And I'm missing, or I think like uh, the best uh, thing is to actually share a game while you are playing with someone really close to you. It, it won't have the same feeling. It won't have the, the same fun. You can't react more. Uh, you can directly look at the screen of your friends or whatever. So we are playing all night. We're sleeping only one or two hours just, uh, I mean, on the floor, basically, because sure. we, we didn't have uh, the money, as I said, to get a hotel or whatever. So our backs were already hurting at the, at the, in the morning. And, but we just didn't care because we were just here to, to have fun. And that was uh, the most beautiful thing. You said in this documentary as well that, like, when you got even your first successes on land, though, you did get a bit of an ego boost. Like, that was something I would ask. Look, if someone's very young and they're very good at something, it's pretty famous quality in life that it can feel like it comes to them easily, so maybe they don't value it as much. Did, did you actually think, like, yeah, I'm just the best, or I'm, I'm actually really good? Like, do you actually think you were one of the best players early on? Honestly, yes. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I... I, there is no explanation for that, but when I was starting to, to, to do some games, or even when I was starting the game, I was always topping the score. Uh, even in like the basic servers I was saying in, uh, in FFA, in free for all, when I started to do some practice, uh, with the team, I was always, uh, also top of the scoreboard. When I was playing with friends, I was top of the scoreboard. When we were doing some pickups, uh, together with the French team, I was topping the scoreboard. Like I was always topping the scoreboard. So of course you came to a point like, okay, I'm the best and no one can actually really like, uh, it was actually something really rare for me that being killed and saying like, damn, he, he was better than me, you know? Right. And w when I was getting killed, I was like, okay, I did, I did, I did a misread, I did a, a misstuff, uh, I, was, I did a mispositioning, stuff like that, but it was always coming from me. Uh, and it actually takes some time before, I would say I needed maybe to wait CSGO before waiting to actually face enemies. I was like, all right. Like, damn, he's maybe, maybe as good as me. Because when he's shooting at me, I can't say I played it bad. I can just say, like, he played it better. And it was actually a first feeling for me. Right. Because oh, one thing I wanted to ask you was, when, when you became a big player in CSGO, I did try doing some research back in the day and finding some of the little, like, pieces of trivia. So I've got a question I want to ask you, which is, when I looked this up, you correct me if I'm wrong, but back in the day, one of the things people might not know is a lot of actual how um, Source was arranged was through the ESL website, if you remember back in the day, which is weird, because in Counter-Strike, in CS 1.6, we often use clan base famously. But I noticed on this, you were one of the people who on ESL used to go on those 1v1 lads and you just arrange like a 1v1 game and if people don't know even though it's Counter-Strike you just turn up you play like a 1v1 against the guy on an in map essentially and then like one of you wins one. it's like a ladder and I saw on this you played like tons of these and, and also you were like winning almost every single one you were winning like 30 in a row something. is this accurate? It sounds like you, like I say you kind of just like wrecking everyone you played back then uh, it was more than 30 uh, for the little story uh, I actually had a contact uh, as an ESL admin all right, and when I was grinding the ladder, I told him I have a challenge, and I want to have a trophy that no one have basically. On the, you know, the, there was like a ESL profile, like a yes. HSTV uh, page. Uh, yes, nowadays. exactly. Yes. Um, and I wanted to have a trophy that it doesn't exist. So I actually asked him if I go 100 wins without any losses, <laughs> okay. are you gonna are you gonna make me a mid ale just for that? And he told me, all right, that's the deal. The story came that I crumbled under the pressure at 91, oh, 99 wins, right, 99. Right. Like I went to 99 wins, zero lose, all straight. And the last one that I needed to actually got this medal, I lost it. <laughs> okay. 
Because by the way, along these lines, look, one of the cool things about doing these interviews so many years later is I feel like a lot of the like emotion that's negative gets removed and people could just look at the yeah. game with sort of free your eyes. Like famously, I always say, I'm often shocked when I do like really old school interviews that I can ask someone about their rival. And actually, they might not be, might not have a problem with it or maybe they can appreciate them. So I have a question for you. And the question here, Shocks, is just to Shocks. It's not a question for everyone in the world. They can have their own opinion. Was Shocks the greatest player in Sauce? Oh, that's a tough one, you know, because even I'm, if... I mean, uh, to you, though, to you, not to the community, to you. <laughs> me? Me, if you ask me, in a way, I feel like, uh, I feel like, yes. I feel like, as I said, I didn't have, like, a, a proper opponent, uh, like a rival for me, because uh, the rival maybe I had um, from uh, from my from my point of view, would be like maybe players like Scream or Kenyes, all right? Right. But Scream was only rifle and Kenyes was only AVP. And I felt like I was both. So maybe in some details, yes, Scream had a better aim f than me. I mean, he had a better aim from anyone in the sure. world, right? Sure. <laughs> and uh, and Kenyes was faster than me. Like this, this, there was these two points that I could not, I had actually to accept it. And... Uh, around 2015, I think 2015, 2016, I don't remember. Uh, I actually remember myself uh, that because it was really good years also for Kenyas and Scream, and I and I knew I knew that it was actually this true path that I was missing to maybe like be the best of all time. So I was actually myself looking at some Scream and some Kenyas demos because I wanted to actually try to understand um, and maybe to be. I mean, to actually achieve what they are doing and just to actually add it to my gameplay. Because I felt like with me being me, if I add Scream Aim and I had Kenny's um, fastness, I was like, okay, like I'm going to kill everyone. You there is no fucking right? doubt. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I actually, I actually work a bit uh, on that, not a lot. But I do remember for one part that actually it helped me, especially on the Kenya sport. Because on demo, I was like, you know, like, how fast he was when he was actually shooting and how fast he could reshoot. And I was like, even me, when I'm trying to do my best while switching, I can't actually uh, switch that fast and be able to shoot again with the AVP. Like, it's not about like being precise or accurate. It's about like, how fast can you shoot again with the AVP? And I actually figured out... Um, I was doing like a slow motion, I do remember, a slow motion like on a specific action that I thought like he was so fast. And I actually saw that he was actually picking up like his knife. While for me, what I mean is like, right. I mean, you could see the difference on the animation that it was not, you know, the, um, the killer like last weapon used. He actually was pressing like the, the, the knife button. And I was like- All oh, right, it's even more impressive, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was like, is there a thing? Is there a thing? Like, is there a thing that maybe by pressing the knife and then pressing against the AVP, you can win maybe like 20 milliseconds? You know, we are talking about really like really fast reaction. Yeah, yeah. And I actually tried it and I feel like, yeah, you are winning some. Ah, right. You are definitely winning some. By the way, one thing I thought we'd do in this interview is because you've had such a long career, let's just bounce around by the topic, not by this set year. So since you brought up Kenny S, I did actually want to ask about this, but I was going to ask about it later. So here's the question, Shocks. As an outsider, and obviously people know I always loved early CSGO and the French teams, the thing that never made sense as an outsider if people didn't know the drama of the scene is, wait a minute, Shocks is the best rifler and Kenny S is the best AWPA. Why don't they just play together? Like, not only did you not play together, but it used to always be when you left the team or got kicked, then Kenny S came in. Like, was there never a point in the years before? Because I've seen been at those events. All the French players are all very social. They all know each other. Did you never just get together and go, why don't we just play together? Like, you're, you were the best in the world. I'm the best. In the, why don't we just play together and win everything? Why did it take so many years? Uh, because we were not uh, the people who actually were creating or managing a team. Uh, you know, right. it was actually like the leader uh, back then that was kind of choosing the player he wants to. Uh, and we never, it, it kind of never came to our minds about just speaking to each other uh, and just saying like, let's play together and do something together. You know, we were just following the leaders and the the, the one who is creating actually the team. And that's, it's just a story that actually like, it just never came to a point where 
it was a good timing to play together before before 2017, uh, if I'm right. Uh, so it just about, it, it's only that, honestly. It's nothing specific. Even okay. ourselves, uh, we were kind of speaking uh, sometimes together and we are like, damn, it would be good to play together, you know? But we... I mean, it was not uh, us who was deciding who is going to play with who. So we're just following the vibes and uh, and we knew can die in a way that, bro, we're not going to end our career without playing together at least once. <laughs> it has right. to happen one day. Yeah, one thing that you've just brought up there, which will be a theme in this interview if people don't know the French scene, is the in-game leaders slash captains have a lot of say in who get, joins the team, who gets kicked. So along these lines, I I noticed in this documentary, someone who was featured quite heavily was KRL. Now, if people don't know, in the modern day, people are just going to think, oh, he's a famous streamer. It's like, no, he actually was essentially like the original great in-game leader in Source from France, right? So I noticed he was very, very complimentary about you in this video. So the question I have is this shocks is, one, what sort of figure was he? to you and then two am I not wrong didn't he kick you out the team a couple of times like, that's why I was kind of a bit shocked by their like relationship he was very positive so what would you say to that uh, I don't know if he kicked me that much honestly uh, I think it was more very games in the existence that kicked me more right <laughs> probably uh, but here I got Carol, Um I mean it's something special because it was the first time I playing with uh, him under his leadership I, I'm, I'm something like 16 so I'm really young and he's the first I mean, one of the first one, not the firstest one, but one of the first one who actually uh, bringing me to like a top team. So it's something specific. It's uh, one of my first big leader. He's very charismatic when he's playing, when he's speaking to his player, and he got something that when he's speaking to you, I don't know how to really explain it, but you definitely want to listen to him in a way, you know. Uh, that's a cool thing. The bad thing is like he was really harsh with his players. Uh, he was uh, bad talking for sure, uh, too much, uh, even insulting us. Like oh, it right. was, okay. He, he was like that. And the thing is like, because other players in a team that was older than me, like were accept accepting that in a way, like it's not me who is like the young one, 15, yes. 16. Uh, I was a lot, I was, I did not have the same personality as I have today. So I was really shy. Uh, like I was just following the moves, but it was hurting me a lot uh, inside because I knew it was not something correct. Uh, but in a way, you want sometimes to, you're gonna have sometimes to do what it takes if you want to actually like uh, be at the best. And I know this team was the best. So if I wanted to stay at the best, like I kind of have to, to do with it, but it, uh, it was not easy. Uh, that was uh, his weakness, uh, I would say, overall. Uh, but as I was saying, like his strength is definitely like he's charismatic, and uh, he know how to give confidence uh, to his players. And we all know that uh, CS is a lot of confidence based as well uh, as a game. So when you have someone who is able to boost uh, that for you uh, in like ten seconds and can make it like really high, it's like it's it's easier, I would say, to play. Because one thing that this uh, this topic broaches into is, like you mentioned, obviously I also wanted to talk about like the very game's existence stuff. So the way I thought I would ask it is this, Shocks, is it uh, from the outside, there's two ways to look at this. You can look at it from the team perspective, and that's like, you know, this guy was like a troubled player and sometimes he had attitude issues. But I would actually ask from your perspective, because when you're describing there, one thing I've noticed from a lot of your interviews over the years is it feels like compared to a lot of players, you're quite sensitive. Like, it seems that like you do care about things like what the relationship is with teammates and the leader and stuff. So I get the sense, actually, because let's, let's face it, it was a bunch of different leaders this happened with. It feels like maybe at some point in time, like if they're too strict with you or... They're too harsh like this. Maybe it just gets too much at some point in time. Would you say that's accurate? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's totally accurate. Uh, if you want to get the best from me, I won't say you have to... Uh, to... I mean, to speak to me like a child or whatever. No, uh, I want you to, to give me some credit for sure, to give me some more responsibilities. But, you know, like, like in any job or any sports in a high level, I feel like management comes to a, or coaching comes to a point where you can't coach every person the same way, right? Yes. Everyone is different, and and some play, some players gonna need the, you you're gonna need to be like really cool with them. Some you're gonna need to be really harsh. Some you need to gonna give some advices. 
uh, like it's a lot of different way of coaching. Uh, and myself, one thing that is really sure, it was always hard for me uh, to actually perform uh, when there was there was some, uh, um, I would say, bad mood in the team in a way. Uh, because it was really affecting me. And I was, as I was saying at the, at the, at the beginning uh, of the day, um, like first when I came to a LAN is actually for the patient and to have fun, you know? And I do remember that I did say a lot of times in my past interview, like 10 years ago, for example, or maybe eight, seven years, that I would actually prefer to do like being second or third of a tournament with people that I love in a good yes. spirit than actually being the first lifting a trophy but with people that I don't really care and that I'm not really enjoying, you right. know? Like, I, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's really like in, in my body, in my heart somewhere, that uh, I got some feelings inside that are really like uh, strong. And if these feelings are not good, like I better don't want to win. Like I just don't care, you know, because these feelings for me like are, are the best, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm someone who loves the love in a way. <laughs> and uh, the more the love I have, and the better I will um, I will do. The thing is, you also have to learn. And I did some. It took me actually some years to learn it. That it's not gonna be always like that. You know, like that's the thing. Being a pro level, you're gonna have some troubles. You're gonna have some problems. And it's all about how do you actually solve them. Uh, and and yeah. Uh, Back then, when it was just something uh, really hard for me or too hard to actually handle uh, emotionally wise, I would just kind of give up because it was just too hard for me and I didn't know how to handle it, what I was supposed to do. And as, I w as I'm also someone who is shy, it was really always, it always had been hard for me to come to the people and to tell them in a natural way, uh, like nothing out or whatever, but what is bad and what I want for us to fix. You know, if I'm, depending of the, um, of all the person I actually met in my life, in CS or even outside, uh, I can easily speak with people for hours, I get with any topics and without any problems. And if the person, I would say like, it's just speaking like normally, I can say. But you know, when you are, touching some topics that can hard, there is emotion going out. And of course there are some people that, I mean, they're gonna speak louder, harder, they're not gonna use the same words, uh, being maybe more aggressive in a way. And that's, I would say, a weakness for, for me, is that when someone who is gonna speak to me like that, like there is something that actually connect to my brain. I don't know what, and I don't know why, but like, I just can't comp continue to actually listen to him. And I just can't continue to actually speak to him, you know, because it's, I don't know, in my opinion, it's something like disrespectful, but I mean, I've also know now with years and the experience and with the age that it's not because you're going to speak louder or you're going to be maybe more aggressive that he's, he's disrespect you, disrespecting you or whatever. No, uh, it just, there is some emotions and you need to actually understand more what he's trying to tell you that how he's he's actually telling it to you but it took me some years to actually understand that and still today like it's hard uh, because as you were saying like i'm sensitive and it can come to a point where if i don't act if i struggle actually um to manage these emotions i'm actually trying to shake and all right it's okay and if i'm starting to shake it's basically uh the moment where i need to go out or someone need to get me out of this conversation it can be on in a team but it can be outside in the streets right. it can be with my it can be with my family with my wife whatever you know like everyone is different but shaking for me is not something good because it's actually is the point where i'm actually losing the control yes and and for me, it's, I'm not like, you know, some, a lot of time is in the, in the life you are thinking like you're either like black or white in the same. And the best thing is to actually be gray, right? Because there is no black thing or white thing overall. So having the balance is the best. And this is one of the hardest things for me to actually find. And I'm more that black or white guy. 
So the thing is like when it's coming to going too much to an extreme, like it's it's not gonna be good. And for me, for the people who I'm actually like I have in front of me, so I just need like like to calm down. And yeah, I mean it's just a part of me. What can I do? You know, I'm, I don't think it's a strength uh, because overall I'm someone who honestly is patient and I'm trying to understand the people the most uh, I can and actually have some empathizing with them. But, but yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's just too hard. Sometimes I can't, you know, like when you are missing some sleep or maybe you, you, you didn't speak about a lot of problems. And uh, like, as we are seeing, like, you know, the flower pot, the flower pot is like growing and growing and growing and growing. And if you wait, and that's what I was doing also in the past, like it's too much. Probably and gets too after, big, right? Yeah, exactly. And then when the flow, flow pot like is just full, then a lot of times there is no way to actually like return to that yes. situation. It's just too late. So that's why you want every time the flow pot to grow a lot to actually make it empty. And it's not easy task to do. I think it's a really like a uh, human, human job in a way. Because it's not about like, we're talking maybe on CS on pro level, and it's really important to do that in a team. Otherwise, you, you're going to have some troubles sometimes with your management or with your teammates that comes to a point where maybe you can't play with them anymore, and which is sad because it's too late. But it can be with your girlfriend, with your wife, can be with, um, with your job, whatever. Everything in life, you need to speak as long as it's actually affecting you, there is no point for you to actually keep inside you. And I think this is uh, like a human thing that, I mean, a lot of us are just doing this naturally. Oh, you know, sure, we, yeah. yeah, we don't want to hurt. We know we're gonna have a bad time because every time you are speaking about this, lot, this stuff, it's not gonna be a happy time. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna have your stomach like totally fucked up because <laughs> you know, like you are stressed a lot, but you have to go through these things to actually make the future better. And yeah, and I think when we when we are talking about experience in a way, this is probably one of, of the main things that comes to my mind because I will never do that when I was 20, 22, 23 sure. years. No, no, definitely not. You know, this is something that I actually learn uh, with the time and just stop being in a, like a turtle, you know, when something is hurting you. I know it's hard and this is why you actually need to do um, I mean, to have some courage because what is the courage of a role is actually not to have the fear because the fear, you're always going to have that. It's a, actually a, a human emotion. Everyone is fearing. Don't like, there is no one in the, in the world that who doesn't know this, this feeling. And that's totally normal because this is your body who is telling you that it's here. Right. And the thing is like, this is where the courage is actually coming is actually, even if you have the fear, you still need to go, man. Like this is the life. And I think this is just something that you learn with time, you know, like, I think it's totally normal to just don't have this mentality or just yes. to understand that when you are 16, 20, 20, 22, 23, maybe, maybe more. I don't know. I think it depends about the, about um, every personalities, but, uh, but yeah, that's a, that, that's a big topic, honestly. Because this actually obviously brings up like the big topic I was just alluding to there of when you were in these teams, like very games and with existence, etc. The crazy thing is if people go back, even though like we're saying, Shox is one of the best players in Source, it's like it looks like every few months you're in and out of the team and it's like you keep going away and coming back. And I heard when I asked the other teammates from like the ones from NBK and all the ones from the CS go, they described it as like, it's like you, they'd have like a, it, it, they said it, was, it wasn't that you were ever a bad player. It was always just like personality conflicts like other you and the leader, you and someone else. And they said it was more like they, they'd, they you'd get kicked out the team and then you'd go away and you'd be so good that they'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, we have to bring him back. Like, <laughs> he's too good. And we you know, like we have this term in English. I know you actually have a French version. We say like problem child. I know in, in French it's like enfant terrible. It's like the idea that like, it's like someone you have to deal with because they're too good. But at the same time, you know, there's going to be some like complications, sort of simple as other players. Would you, was it something similar from your perspective? What did you think back then? Were you in and out of these teams? Uh, when I think about it right now, honestly, I can say that, uh, I was, uh, I was a young kid. Like there is actually nothing to, to say about it. You know, like that, that's the real thing. Uh, I actually get kicked out from very games, uh, one time because, uh, very games just had, um, their new sponsorship, Razer. 
and because they had their new sponsorship, uh, we had to play with the mouse, with the mousepad, uh, with the headset, right. with the keyboard, like with everything. All right. And I was not playing with Razer at all. And <laughs> for me back then, it was something bad. Okay. Which right now, at the moment we're speaking, I think Razer is really yeah, good. Yeah, they're good now. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, but it was not uh, how I was thinking. And because of that, I was like, there is no fucking way that I'm going to play with these shit mice and whatever. Right. Like, I don't care if they got a sponsorship. Like, do I have more money? Do I have something that is going to change me? No. Very Games got the deal. I do have absolutely nothing. Right. So I'm not going to actually make Very Games happy because they do have a sponsor. And for me, I don't earn anything. And I have to play with a mouse with a keyboard that is going to downgrade my level. There is no fucking way. I'm not going to do that. You know, so this was my, this was how I was. So of course I got kicked. Like, I mean, that's right. normal. Like, that's totally normal, sure. you know? Um, and also like, because of my sensitiveness, as you we were talking, uh, I didn't know how to talk or I didn't know how to um, maybe, yeah, to talk overall, overall about my team, uh, with my teammates. So when something was going, not in a way that I want to, I really had a bad behavior. You know, I was not speaking about it, but you could see in my body and you could see in my face that I was not happy, you know? And I was definitely like, there was like, like a bad mood overall around me that affects everyone. And that's really bad. That's really bad. Like there is no way to do that. Uh, and in a way that was why it's also like always kind of bring me back because also uh, this aura that I'm speaking about I can also have it in a good way and that actually can affect the whole team in a really good mood. And every time my manager and even existence or Smith, my teammates told me that, man, if you're always like that, we're always going to win because I was bringing something in the team that no one was actually bringing to not only like in game wise, but I was doing a lot of calls. I was having a really good mood. I was actually giving confidence to my teammates. Uh, I was kind of in a way like the, the, I don't know who said that, but one of my teammates, oh, I think it was Smith, always told me you can be the best teammate of all time as as much as you can be the worst teammate of all time. Right. You know? Uh, and with time, I tried more to be balanced. And I think with time, it was better and better. But we're talking uh, uh, in the time about very games that, yeah, I was... Definitely like not balanced. So depending on the day, how I'm actually going to wake up, I'm on a, I'm either going to make you win or either going to make you lose. My manager, you know, Nyak, uh, who was yeah, uh, yeah. the manager for G2 Titan also. Of yes, of course. He always told me for years and years and years, even when I was with G2 and stuff, he always told me, Richard, in a team, like you, you are the key. You are the key because it's actually depending on you, that's how the team is going to look like. And at the beginning, I was I was taking that as a real compliment because when someone is telling you that you can make your world team win, it means like you can, you are really important and you can have a lot of impact. But with years and years, I tried to actually work on that. But with years and years, I was just, man, I'm, I'm fucking tired about being the key. I need someone to step up, you know, like right. because, because being the key always in your teams, like actually recommend you to do a lot of efforts, a lot of work. And it's not about in game. It's also about your personalities. Yes. And, and it's kind of hard to put you on your shoulders. Like if we win, it's thanks to you. But if, if we lose, it's probably thanks to you as well. <laughs> you know, so it's, it was hard. Yeah. Because one thing I also noticed in the documentary that, like, look, it may be no connection, but I'll ask you, is as soon as I saw this, it made a little light bulb go off. When they said you were the youngest in the family and that you were, like, the little kid and they were letting you play on the PC, if people understand when people are the youngest in a group and they have older brothers, often the youngest one is the spoiled one or is the one that can be a bit bratty, you know, and can act out a bit because everyone just gives them the attention and the lot, right? It sounds like you've been a lot more reflective later in your career. Like, in this period, shocks. I've known a lot of players that have this... this uh, 
um, reputation, like, oh, they're really talented, but they're like, I mean, sadly, people use the word toxic, which kind of ruins the conversation, but mm. I would just say they're difficult, let's say that. But actually, from knowing them, Shocks, a lot of the time, if you ever talk to these people one-on-one outside of the game, so there's no frustration, there's no problems, what you actually find is it's just, I, I'm, I'm getting the senses, maybe your case, it's actually more that they're really, what they're frustrated at isn't that their like, teammate did something wrong in the game, it's that they have a, pro- a hard time like communicating to them, like essentially what was wrong or how we're going to fix it and that frustration is what makes them angrier and angrier but to their teammate maybe the teammate just thinks you're just raging you're just you're just a bad attitude was there any any of this do you think ever involved in your career at this time uh yeah it makes sense it makes sense because for example for uh i would say like a normal person i don't know how to say that um let's say uh your teammates uh, told you about uh, something that uh, he didn't want or he didn't like or he wants you to improve, whatever. Um, someone who maybe is not maybe lacking of confidence. I don't know what he's coming from, honestly. Like you have to do some psychology and stuff. Uh, like he's just gonna like listen to him and just maybe arg, do some arguments with him and then everything's gonna be fine. For me, for example... Like, I can actually take it bad. Uh, my mother always told me that I actually can't uh, handle a failure. Right? right? For me, failing is something way, way uh, hard for me to, to handle. You know, it's not about like, oh, even, even at school when I had a bad note, or maybe uh, in a match if I was uh, losing a, a 1v1 or if I was losing a match, or maybe that uh, maybe I wanted to do some uh, workout for 45 minutes, but it was too hard, so I did 35, you know, like shitty stuff. But for me, that's a fail. And it's really hard for me to actually accept that I can fail. I think it's something good and something bad because it's maybe thanks to it, that actually I've been playing for years and years on nice. CS on a, on a really professional level and the highest level because every year, every time, I always wanted to be the best version of myself and more and more with the years. And I was even more working at the end than at the beginning. Okay. Oh, right. okay. Uh, but in a way, it's hard because when are you going if you are if you are if you are too hard with you, sometimes you can actually start with having some doubts because if you, I mean, you're gonna fail. Everyone is failing in life. It's all about how are you gonna, what are you gonna do after you fail to make sure maybe you won't fail again, or maybe you will, but at least you're gonna try to not, to actually achieve it. And you're gonna try to succeed it, you know? And for me, it was just like, okay, like I'm failing, I'm bad. And then the mood goes directly like, from zero to to really down, you know, because I'm feeling really bad for something that should not affect me that hard, you know. So, yeah, it's a, it's a strength and and a weakness, I would say. So, of course, with my teammates or with my teams, sometimes it's uh, maybe I, I mean we didn't I think understand each other uh, because what could affect me really, really, really hard won't be the same. For them, okay. I can give you one, even one recent example oh, in a well, way. Uh, for example, with Liquid, okay, uh, we were doing, I think, a blast qualification, something like that. I was playing from NA, and we lost again. Pain gaming. We didn't have a good game. Okay. Uh, we didn't show up, and I mean, for them, it was like, okay, like we lost. Fuck. It's sad. It's gonna be sad for a time, maybe. And like tomorrow is another day. And we'll see what is tomorrow. Right. Okay. For me, when we lost again like, pain gaming back then, and with the teammates I had, with the ambition I had with that team, I was totally mad. Totally mad. Like after the game, uh not in front of them, of course. But after the game, I was even like punching my table, I was like right. yelling, like because like it was just like Missing a qualification nowadays. Even myself, if I see a team uh, that is going to miss a qualification and even a good team that I'm maybe going to follow or support, I'm just going to say like, damn, like they had a shitty day. They they had a shitty stuff. It's hard, but it's okay. They're going to speak about it. 
is it gonna is it gonna work on it and we'll see for the next time and that's pretty much it you know but i don't know why i will actually uh be like that and act like that for other people but for me it's like it's like the big failure of all time it's like a shame it's like something is really going wrong you know like i'm going too far because it's actually affect me so hard because because of that failure thing that i can't handle you know and so yeah that's worth it <laughs> Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, another thing I thought we could spin into to talk about this is existence. Because if people don't know, shock's played with existence about one million times, it feels like. like. Every few years, you're in and out of teams together. And one of the things I've noticed is interesting is it feels like as your relationship with existence changed over the years, is what you're describing now. It's like you maturing and getting an idea of a team structure and leadership. Because one thing I found amazing, dude, this was almost like I thought I woke up in like alternate universe. Was I remember when I came online in 2018 and you did that video with Carlos in G2 where you were like right I'm bringing back the only true leader in the French scene existence and I was like what because if people don't know like the whole story of Very Games and Titan in CSGO basically is like the two get along for a while and then inevitably maybe existence is too harsh and Shox is rebelling against it, and then he leaves and then they go back years later so was there an evolution there like when you, like, the existence you knew in the early days in Source and in CSGO was, what, did you view him differently was he harsh as a leader was he very strict um, a bit, yes, but in a good way. You know, it was not like Kara, like with us insulting us or whatever. Uh, existence has always been like really respectful. He was just hard in a way that you need to work, which like totally makes sense. You need to work and you need to you need to follow the team. And the thing like why a lot of times we are not on the same page is because um, I didn't want to work in a way. <laughs> right. I, 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 I mean, I, I, let's let's say it like that. I had the talent. And back then, uh, on CS Source and even at the beginning of CSGO, like, I didn't need to put extra work. And, ev and even, like, the less I was playing CS, the best I was. All right. And the more I was spending time with CS, the, the, the worse I was. You know, like, it was totally, like, it was kind of, in a way, like, frustrating because when sometimes existence was really hard at me and saying like, this, that time it's your last chance, you need to do this, this, this. Okay, I, that time I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna do it. And I was doing like a really hard job, but every time I was working a lot, it was actually the times when I was the worst. Right. Like, you know, I think it just come down to, to personality wise and how you are, everyone is different, but I'm always been that guy who didn't need to work to actually be good. And the more time I spent on CS, the worse I am. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why, because maybe my, my mind is not fresh or maybe I, I'm, I'm less playing with my instinct. When you work a lot and you are thinking a lot of things, then kind of like, where's the balance between, between the logic, the tactics uh, and your instinct? Because yes. CS is a, because Counter Strike is a FPS and like you need your instinct to actually work in a, in in a lot of ways. But yes. the the more you're gonna work and the harder is gonna actually find the balance. Like when are you go? Well, for example, when are you gonna push on uh, on Banana on Inferno? Uh, maybe you saw eight demos, so you know like you you don't have to push or whatever. But in a way, if you didn't look at these demos, man, your instinct would tell you to actually push banana right here, right now. Yes. And when you after look back the demo, a lot of times your instinct was good. But you're actually not following your instincts because you are just trying to base yourself uh, of what you saw and you, you work, the work you did because you, you spend a lot of time on that. So you actually want a, a reward in a way, you know, that makes sense. So the, the balance is, uh, is really hard, but uh, with existence, it was... It was rough. Uh, I actually, I think uh, that I wanted to actually get it back because I was just, uh, it was the end of the super team in G2 and it was a really, really hard year for me. Uh, I even started to got to a depression at the end. That's oh, why nice. I actually, that's why I actually like tell uh, to G2 that I'm, I'm like, whatever you're going to do, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to follow you right now. I need to step down from this, that team from my mental health because it was coming to a point where at the Boston Major, when we are going out in the quarterfinals against Clone Line, if I'm right, yeah, yeah. you know, normally at the, um, at the end of an event, when uh, even if you lost or whatever, like 
you're gonna hang t together. Sure. You're gonna you're gonna maybe get a, a beer. You're gonna speak about that. And I mean, you are together. You are blocked. You're gonna get the planes the next day. So I mean, you're just trying to to have fun how you can, or maybe to speak about the game, whatever. But be together. And I always did that in all my career. And it was actually the first time that I stayed in my room, in my bed alone, and I started to cry. And from there, I was like, there is no fucking way, Richard, that you're gonna cry for that. If you are here right now, you are doing that, you are playing, uh, you are traveling in the world, you are doing, you are, you are playing that game, like remember, it's because of the patient, it's because you love that, it's because you want to have fun, it's because you want to have great times. It's not because, it's not, you are not doing that uh, for a lot of money and to actually cry in your bed alone at the end of an event. Like there is no fucking way, I'm not gonna do that. Like this is not my life, I don't want. And this is where like I just stopped uh, the G2 uh, super team. Uh, other people like were still like kinda okay, I would say to continue. Uh, but I, as I was saying like, because of my sensitiveness, maybe like in, you know the flower pot, but wait, yes. the flower pot I didn't make it empty in the in the it's in the full, past few right. months. <laughs> yeah, and it was full. It was right. way too full. So it it was just too late. Um, and after that, I think I want to actually bring back existence and also Smith about a player, because at the end of the day, even if we had uh, some uh, some, um, we are not always agreed. Uh, I still have. It was actually my best memories at this time was when playing with the team, for example. Oh, so right. actually, I mean, one of my best. So I kind of wanted to bring it back, you know, maybe some nostalgia, uh, maybe coming back into my comfort zone because in 2017, it was so hard that at the end, I just want people who, who I like close to me uh, that I know uh, are not going to make me really bad to this point where I'm going to cry. And maybe this is why I want to actually make them back because I feel like, okay, when we won again, I mean, we won in the past, we can do it again. But the story will sell and it's not even only that story, but a lot of times when you try to take something from the past and to do it again, it's Doesn't almost never work, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost never working. You know, it's even when you got a girlfriend, you break it. Yes. <laughs> six months after, you want yes. to you you want to take her back because probably you want also like to go back to that comfort zone. Yes. That actually you were saying like it was not that bad, maybe you know. But at the end, it's it's not working either, and you're just gonna break up again and again and again and again. You know, so yeah. And little story about existence that I do respect a lot, and honestly, uh, it's uh, it's kind of a friend uh, today, uh, just to people understand how I was. Uh, in very games, like we're talking to, we're talking about like 2011, 2010, yes. 2011. So I'm like 19 years old. So as I was saying, like, I'm, I'm really like, I'm a child in my head. I'm a young cut. I got to, and I am, I'm, I have a big ego. Like I'm definitely not the, the same person as that I am today. Uh, but just to give you an example, how, and also how much I wanted to win. And maybe that sometimes I'm also maybe too much influenceable in a way. I was coming from Carol, okay? And I was saying Carol it was really hard, really mean, and all the stuff was about winning. However I want, I don't care about being your friend, I don't care about your life, I don't care about anything. We're just here to win, okay? And I kind of develop my early days in that um, mindset. Then comes existence, which is totally a, a different one, more respectful, but more, but more work. Uh, more disciplines, more house to put on the server because we scared right? like he was doing that, but we were not even practicing and still winning lands. Right. All right. With existence, it was like practicing every day, uh, doing some tactics, uh, having you this much done. Like it was definitely like two different schools. Okay. And it come to a day where existence is coming, is uh, taking me in a bootcamp that because he was bad leading and we could feel like he was really, I mean, he was not in a good mood and he's actually uh, making proof of courage and he's actually telling us uh, after the practice and stuff that uh, he actually like got rid really some personal uh, right. problems uh, that make, that's that, and he's explaining why he's like that. Sure. Yeah. So right now I'm just gonna tell him, thanks for telling me 
uh, I think it was really hard for you to tell us uh, that because it's some private stuff. And I'm gonna, and it's okay, we're gonna make it work and everything is gonna be fine. You know, like this is how am I like <coughs> that for some years. But there be as before, I just answered him, man, after 20 minutes, he was speaking and even crying at the end. I just actually answered him like, I didn't give a fuck about your life, bro. <laughs> like, oh, man. Okay. like whatever you're going to do in your life, I don't give a fuck. You just need to actually like make your personal life uh, outside of the game when we are playing. And like, it was really mean and really bad. And it's, it was also like why sometimes existence like was not really, in, uh, I mean, was harsh on me. Uh, because there was some, this, all this intern personal stuff that you're right. not going to speak in an interview, sure. but of course, like when you got a teammate as he's doing that to you, like you playing with him because he's good and you want to win, but it's hard. Yes. Right. And there is another story because we are here for stories. Yeah, right. It was that in insomnia, or, I don't remember, same same period, 2010, 2011, 2009, 2009, I don't remember. Uh, we went to McDonald's and uh, my English was definitely not how it is right now, but I could actually ask uh, at McDonald's what I'm going to eat. It was actually not the case uh, for existence. He really didn't know any words for him, for in English right. for him, it was really hard. So, and... So we are actually like trying to, uh, I mean, someone is doing it for him. I think Nyak or whatever, or Smith. Then we're going back to the table and he's asking me, oh shit, they forgot the cheeseburger or whatever. Uh, and he's asking me like, can you please uh, go ask them uh, the, the cheeseburger if, uh, if uh, that's fine for you? Because I was me doing still the line, I think. So he's going back to me like, right. oh, they forgot, they, they forgot that. So can right. you tell them, okay? And I'm just saying like, man, you just have to say like, uh, you forgot my cheeseburger. Can I have it, please? And he was uh, actually saying to me like, yes, I know, but honestly, it's hard for me and I can't do it. And I just said him like, man, you can ask a fucking cheeseburger. Like, it's okay. I, I'm not going to do it for you and stuff like that, you know? And he was just licking the paper on the floor and that we started to 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 look at each other like we're going to punch okay. each other outside in the street. You know, that was some stuff. Like, honestly, I was not the same. And, <laughs> okay. and it was maybe my strength, my strength in the game because I felt like I was above everyone. So I had like that extra boost confidence. Like there is no sure. way you're going to win against me. But in personal life, it came to a point where I was not nice. I was being mean. I didn't know the word, uh, the, what was the empathizing thing about what people can feel and trying to put yourself in their shoes and to actually try to understand. Uh, so yeah, uh, really selfish also <coughs> in a way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what you want to do with life, it's actually to be a, person, a better version of yourself. And I think this is why uh, people from uh, who are maybe like 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, like we call them like really sage people, right, you know, yes. because, because they actually like been going through all these things and they know what is bad, yes. what is, what is good. And when, if you ask someone who is maybe 75 years old, some stories about when he's 15 or 20, you probably like probably going to be shocked because you're going right. to think like, what? You did that? Yes. You, my grandpa? No. Sure. But this is a life story. Yes. When I make content, it isn't just me, the mic, and a guest or a topic. It's also me with the support of my whole crew. Who's that, you might ask? The Skrilluminati. That's who. They include Frisky, Matt Pognaccio Racula, Ahmed Hadju, Tosh, Tobias Berners-Corny, Jensen Gore, Animosity, Toucan, and you know it if you've heard it before, but if you haven't, a special thanks goes out to my main man, Jerky's Minion. Well, if you want to know upcoming topics and guests I'm going to have on my channel, maybe you want to ask me a question to answer in an AMA in video fashion. Do you want to hear one of those long discussions and actually be part of it and be able to ask me questions? Want to find out who I'm going to interview next? If any of these perks or more appeal to you, Put your money where your mouth is. Join the Skrilluminati today via the Patreon link in the description box below.